This is Fashion Fridays. Every Friday we present you with a fashion icon or topic. Today we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about Zenith. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello Aluxers and welcome back. Today we're going to discover the 15 exciting facts you probably didn't know about Zenith. So let's dig in. Founded over 153 years ago, Zenith is a pioneer in the watchmaking industry. The company was founded in 1865 by Georges Favre Jesco and has since become a household name within the luxury watch manufacturing industry. In 1999, the company was purchased by LVMH, becoming one of its many watch brands comprising $5.6 billion in collective income per year. Zenith has been setting the pace through most of the 20th century, whether it's in the air, water, or on the ground. Most historians credit the company as being the inventors of the manufacturing concept. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So, let's take a closer look at this innovative company with the 15 things you didn't know about Zenith. Number 1. Founder Georges Favre Jesco started watchmaking at just 9 years of age. Although he didn't start the company until he was 22 years old, Georges Favre Jesco was always intrigued by watches. At nine years of age, his interest in the art and science of watchmaking was piqued. He dropped out of school and began his apprenticeship full time. He always harbored the ambition for one day creating the greatest watch ever made. However, at the time, he lacked the technology and the organization to achieve this. He realized that the artisans that worked on different delicate parts were scattered all over, working in isolation. When the idea of housing all of them under one roof hit him, that changed everything. Number 2. Zenith became the first in-house watch manufacturer. Long before the company executives knew the term vertical integration, the company had already integrated the concept. As a result of his vast experience in the watchmaking business, the founder put together the world's first in-house manufacturing plant. The facility was equipped with all the necessary tools and equipment, like rolling mills, foundry, and dial-making units. This made sure that the company oversaw the whole production process from start to finish and the building located in Lalakla is today listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Number 3. Russell Westbrook was named the Zenith Brand Ambassador in 2014. In 2014, Russell Westbrook of the Oklahoma City Thunder in the NBA was named as the Brand Ambassador for the Zenith Brand. During the announcement, Russell said that the brand's tradition of creativity and excellence matched his own. The CEO, Jean-Frédéric Defour, commended the player for his hard work. He also pointed out that Westbrook's unique style and leadership on and off the court made him a valuable partner to the brand. Most recently, Eason Chen was announced as the new brand ambassador for the brand. The musician is popularly known as the god of songs by his adoring fans. Number 4. 1969 was the tipping point for the Zenith brand. 1969 was a historical year. Firstly, this was the year the first man landed on the moon. Secondly, it's the year the Zenith El Primero movement was born. It can be argued that this unveiling propelled the Zenith brand into legendary status. The El Primero featured technology that made it the most accurate watch at the time. Once again, the Zenith company blew the competition out of the water. At the time, other watch companies were hard at work trying to develop an automatic chronometer. The prototype El Primero had a reserve power of 48 hours. It managed an impressive 36,000 vibrations per hour, making it accurate to one-tenth of a second. Number 5. The most expensive Zenith watch costs $400,000. The Zenith Academy Turbulon Quatieme Perpetual Black Tie is by far Zenith's most expensive watch, costing over $150,000 more than their next most expensive model. This watch has a titanium case, a black pearl textured dial, and hour markers shaped out of 32 total diamonds. This stunning timepiece also includes a chronograph, perpetual calendar with a digital date and month, and a Turbulon. The cost varies depending on the material selected, but you can expect to pay around $400,000 for this prime example of Zenith quality and luxury. Number 6. Zenith was saved by a corporate act of disobedience. 
During the quartz revolution, a lot of mechanical watch manufacturers stopped producing their old models in favor of the new hip quartz technology. Zenith's parent company wasn't about to be left behind. The US-based owners ordered that the dies and punches previously used be destroyed. One defiant foreman, however, decided to hide them instead. A few years later, this move saved the company. Zenith decided to revert back to mechanical watches after its full embrace of quartz technology nearly destroyed the brand. The company realized that they had lost their customer base. Number 7. Profits at Zenith dropped by over 10% in 2016. The watchmaking industry was hit hard in recent years, and Zenith is no exception. The sales were so bad that some brands never published their numbers. It's estimated that the global fall is somewhere in the region of 13%. While the appetite for high-end watches is on the up and up, the average person doesn't spend so much on a new watch. Most of the new generation grew up checking time on their smartphones. Julian Tonnerre was brought in to spearhead the revival of the Zenith brand. This was after the president of LVMH installed himself as the acting CEO of Zenith in an attempt to turn things around. Number 8. Zenith Sales Were Hit Hard By The Corruption Crackdown In China The watchmaking industry has been around for a long time. Zenith, for example, has been around for 153 years. In that time, it has survived a lot of bad things, such as the post-war era, the quartz crisis, and the LCD electronic watch revolution. The latest numbers paint a grim picture, though. Hong Kong accounts for over 66% of Zenith's market. However, a recent corruption crackdown in Beijing has greatly affected their performance in the region. The company has since branched out into less expensive products. Job cuts are a real and imminent danger. Number 9. Zenith Watches Undergo the Most Rigorous Tests Zenith has always been at the forefront of extreme sports and pushing for the impossible. In order to be confident that their watches stay true to this long-standing company philosophy, they undergo some of the most extensive tests in the world. Their biggest and most sold product, the El Primo, was tested by strapping it to the landing gears of a Boeing 707 passenger plane. The flight went from Paris to New York. Despite the jerks and jolts experienced by the plane during landing, the watch was unscratched and largely unscathed. The message was clear. Their products are not only elegant, but indestructible. Number 10. Zenith is the most decorated watchmaker on the planet. Zenith entered its first competition for watchmakers in 1903 and won. This opened the door for many more awards they have won since. Today, the company has over 2,333 awards under its belt. Just name any award in the watchmaking business, and Zenith has probably won it at some point or another. The awards are given to companies that show excellence and performance. Some of the notable categories the company has excelled in are the pocket watch, wrist watch, and onboard watches. And hey, Luxers, if you're interested in checking out one of Zenith's competitors in the luxury market, click on the upper right-hand corner to watch our video, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Rolex. Number 11. The Distinguished Gentleman Ride was first held in 2012. It attracted about 2,500 motorcycle riders in over 60 cities across the world. As the name suggests, the riders wear some of their finest suits and race for charity. Popularity for the event has been growing steadily. Last year, $6 million was raised. This year, Zenith has partnered with Triumph Motorcycles to co-sponsor the event. The funds raised will go towards men's health, in particular suicide prevention and prostate cancer awareness. Number 12. Zenith introduced the Defy Lab, the latest revolutionary technology. In May 2017, the president of LVMH Watch Division and the CEO of Zenith, Julian Tonare, unveiled to the world the Defy Lab. This is the latest product from the manufacturer and is the first watch infused with a new oscillator never seen before. The new oscillator completely eliminates the need for mechanical connections. This reduced the number of components by 30. Manufacturers can now make thinner and sleeker watches. The watch is said to have an oscillation rate of 15 Hz. That's three times faster than its predecessor, the El Primero. Number 13. Zenith's brand name wasn't official until 1911. 
In astronomy, the term zenith is used to refer to the point at which a celestial body is directly overhead an observer. The term is also used to refer to a point at which something or someone is most powerful or successful. The brand wasn't officially named Zenith until 1911 after the completion of the manufacturing plant in La Locle. The founder, a visionary, saw the name as befitting of a brand that would revolutionize the watchmaking industry. This was the first instance of cooperating branding that later was adopted by other companies. Number 14. A Zenith watch once broke the sound barrier. It's no secret that some of the largest men that ever lived owned a Zenith. Felix Baumgartner joined the greats when he leaped from space October 14, 2012. He jumped from a dizzying altitude of over 38,000 meters, or 124,670 feet. Now, if you know a thing or two about gravity, you know it doesn't mess around. The capsule in which he made the freefall accelerated across the atmosphere before plummeting to the Earth's surface at a speed of over 800 miles per hour. This meant he had broken the sound barrier during his fall. Wrapped around his wrist when he made the jump was a classic El Primero Stratos flyback. Number 15. Zenith has sponsored the most extreme sportsmen. The Zenith brand has always been at the forefront in supporting the most extreme sports. Felix Baumgartner was not the first daredevil to be supported by Zenith. Between 2009 and 2012, a Swedish explorer by the name of Johan Ernst Nilsson set out to travel between the North and South Poles. The expedition was dubbed as the Pole to Pole Project. Safely wrapped around his wrist was a reliable timepiece from Zenith. And before that, Ronald Amundsen, who became the first man to head to the South Pole 100 years earlier, also had a Zenith to guide him. And Aluxers, that concludes our 15 interesting facts that most people didn't know about Zenith. And as always, for making it through the video until the end and for being a true Aluxer, here's your bonus fact. Number 16. Even Gandhi owned a Zenith. Gandhi was renowned for his use of non-violent means to fight the oppression of Indians by the British. He led India to independence, employing only acts of civil disobedience. He's widely regarded as an inspiring figure and civil rights activist. He was so committed to his cause, he mostly lived an abstinent lifestyle. He cared little for material wealth, yet even this deeply religious man owned a Zenith watch. It was a silver pocket watch that he received as a gift from Indira Nehu when she was the Prime Minister of India. It is reported that he mostly used it to set time for prayers. The watch was thought to have been lost until 2009 when an Indian billionaire spent $1.8 million to bring the prized possession back to India. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers! Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.